you know, I've known Jesus for a long time, and I have to say that he is my best friend. Now, not everything I do, I have to confess, glorifies him, but he forgives me at all times when I ask. This morning, I want to talk to you about another David, King David, who sacrificed and worshipped the Lamb. Uh, who is the Lamb? It's Jesus. We know that David was anointed at a very young age, as a youth actually, to be the king of Israel. Now David took care of the family's flock. He was the youngest one in the family. Before we go any further, let's pray. Father God, as we open your word, we ask that you would lead us and guide us. Father, that we would see you and know you, that there be a smile on your face, because each one has accepted you totally and completely as their best friend and as their savior. Today, I want to talk to all the kids from one to 101. And if there's anybody here past 101, I will chat with you as well. You see, David trusted God to protect him. And when we first see the story of, of David, we see that he has what appears to be two insignificant things in his possession. He had a, a musical instrument. Do anybody know what the musical instrument was? And he had a slingshot. Now that may not seem like much, and we know that his father sent him to visit his three brothers who was in the army. And when he got there, he heard and seen this big, big, big man called Goliath uh, poking fun and ridiculing the army, and they were all scared. And he asked what was going on. So they told him. And he said, isn't somebody going to go out and take care of this individual who is ridiculing our God, who is ridiculing our nation. Nobody took took him up on the offer. We know that his older brother got a little upset with him, but he said, I will go. And we know that Saul went to work and weighed him down with his sword and his shield and, and, and everything, all the war paraphernalia. But David felt uncomfortable. So he went up to Goliath. And Goliath seen him coming and like most of us would see a, a young kid coming, we sort of snickered at him and poked fun at him and tell him what we're going to do. But David trusted totally and completely in God. So he reached into the bag that he had there, took out a small stone, and he put it in his sling. And he wound, he wound that slingshot. He wound it and he wound it and he let it go. And where did it go? It struck Goliath right in the forehead. We know that was only possible through God. We know that. And we know it was only possible because David had a relationship with his best friend. Now, through the years, through the years, the other little insignificant thing that he had was a harp. And David used to play that harp because he found it soothing. It, used, it, it even used to soothe the, uh, uh, the flock that he was with. And, and then when he went into Saul's service, and Saul, we know, that was upset with him and angry and uh, uh, the thing that would calm him down was this little insignificant heart that God 
allowed David to have. And David used it for the glory of God, to draw him closer and others closer to God. There is nothing that is insignificant to God. There is no such thing as small things. It may appear to be insignificant to you and I, but put it in the hands of God, into the hands of Jesus. Man, what, what power, what power. And of course, now we may remember after that, and Saul had become so jealous of, of David. And by the way, remember now that David was anointed at a very young age, and some years had passed now, and there's a message in that for us, for all of us kids, and we're all kids, we're all a part of the family of God, we're all children, that it takes time sometimes to have our character perfected, to, to be in, in communion with God, in communion with Jesus, and, and allow him to become our best friend at this point you know david has no crown he has no royal robes and you wonder why you wonder why but here he was he's on the run now him and a small band and, and uh, they were hungry and thirsty they didn't have anything to eat they couldn't find anything so finally uh, they came up on a priest in the temple and they had they were given the bread that was unlawful for them to eat but they were given five loaves five loaves of bread let me ask you a question who is the bread the bread is jesus jesus supplied their wants and needs right at the time it was desperately needed. Jesus, God said that David was the apple of his eye. And you had to wonder why. We know that David certainly made some unwise choices that went against uh, what God had, had directed. But never once did he leave his counsel. He sure strayed. And we remember the time when he seen this beautiful woman and he wanted her. And we know the sad history and the sad story that he, he sent her husband out so that he could be murdered, so that he could have her. And David suffered for that for many years. In fact, the first child, the firstborn was not born was it it died so you see there are always 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 problems when we go against the counsel of god david did that but he repented he and he admitted he admitted that he was wrong and and jesus says to you and i i am your friend i am your savior Trust me, trust me. And that's where he wanted David. And that's where David was. But yet there was a time we are told that David decided that he wanted the census to be taken. Now that sounds like an insignificant thing. He wanted to find out how many people were in his army. But that was the problem, in his army. And he had them counted. We know, we know from that story that God was not well pleased because he had said to the nation of Israel, I want me to be your trust. I want you to depend on me. And David had the army counted. They took a census and we know there was a great number. So David looked at the numbers of the army and did not, did not trust in God at the time. He trusted in the numbers to go to war. And we know that God was displeased with him. And he gave him three options. But you see, David, knowing God, 
he chose the third option. He said, I will place you. I will place myself in your hands because you are merciful and you are loving. Even though God was displeased with the decisions that David had made, with the choices that he made, David still trusted him because he had a relationship with him. He had, he was his friend. He was his best friend. And he says, I'll put myself at your mercy, which he did, which he did. Why was David not wearing the crown and the robe? Because he placed them at the feet of Jesus. He recognized that Jesus, God, was the only, only king. He did not want to wear it until he sees him again and that should be the same thing with you and i give everything to jesus he is our best friend he is truly the only answer sometimes we think that we can solve a lot of things on our own but look where that gets it doesn't matter if you're five years old or if you're 90 I want, I say to you, if Jesus is not your friend, if he is not your best friend, invite him to be today because he wants to be your best friend today. Now, he wants every one of us to be totally and completely surrendered to him and trust in him totally and completely what a joy i'm sure that the vbs has been to all of the children to all of the children i don't know what age she started and i know that some of your children are fairly old but i know it has been a blessing to you and uh, i want to encourage each and every one each and every one of us that are here listening today to make Jesus number one in our lives. I have asked Leah if she would do a song for us. You can sing along with her. We all know it. What a friend we have in Jesus. And when Leah is finished, I will have a closing prayer. And if there's anybody want to make Jesus number one in their life, mm -hmm. please do so today. to the 
Oh, Father in heaven, we thank you so much that you sent your son, Jesus, so that we could have a best friend. And Father, we thank you for calling us, for being a part of their family. And Father, it doesn't matter what age. We just want to thank you. Our prayer is that each one here today would know that you are the creator, the redeemer, and the soon coming conquering king. Lord, bless each one. We want to thank you for the young ones and for the younger, older ones. Bless each one. Bless our families, God. Lift them up to you, acclaim them for your kingdom, and ask that you would pour your blessings up on each one. We just thank you that you are a personal God. And Father, I pray that each one here that is listening today would trust you totally and completely, would allow you to be Lord and best friend of our lives. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.